What? Meant it is over there. What the fuck? <laughs> Saint Nicholas Cage. <clears throat> Our national treasure. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it a, smells like nothing. <laughs> it's a prey candle. Oh really? Is yeah, that what a, they it, that's Is that what these things are? Yeah. I see these things all over the place, you know, but like I don't know. I'm not a candle guy, so I know, but thank that you. Was funny. No, no, no. I'm saying thank you. Our national treasure. <laughs> It's like uh, when I said like I'm not a candle guy, it means more like I really don't know. Yeah, those are for... the purpose of like other like I have that one candle in my house. That's the uh, 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 it's like an apple cinnamon because you know sometimes I want to smell some apple cinnamon. What's that mean? Why does this candle smell like fireball? It smells like cinnamon. You alcoholic. <laughs> it smells like cinnamon. <laughs> That's like what is, wait. What is that from? A meme. <laughs> okay. Well, is it a, is it a uh, always sunny? Possibly at us all, or I don't know because there's know. also like there's a like, clip from Always Sunny and like Charlie Day walks up and he's like, "Well, you said they weren't serving any booze here," and then Frank's like, "What? That's that's orange juice," and he's like, "What? They're just they're just drinking drinking mixer without any alcohol?" Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah he's and Frank's like, the... "No, people just drink orange juice." What? What are you talking about? People just drink mixer without alcohol. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I just I gotta watch that show. I don't really. It's it, it, it has its a, uh, it's a journey. The show's kind of like evolved a couple of times through its like tenure, because like its first couple of seasons, they're all still just shitty characters throughout it. Yeah, all. they're all bad people, right? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, but like, there's sixteen seasons. Yeah. Is it still going? Yeah. Wow. But like the first like four or five seasons the characters are grounded in a little bit more of a sense of reality and then the show just slowly got a little bit more absurd after that and then it got into a level of like a like out kind of like outlandish groundedness and then like the world that they've created in it is just so fucking weird and the characters have become such like dennis is like a fucking serial killer like clearly like it's Which one's Dennis? Uh, the taller one. Uh, play, uh, um, uh, Ryan Howard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He looks like a serial killer. <laughs> and Charlie Day just like get got. Like, he, they did the Joey to him. He got dumber. Uh, and Frank just became a lot more. Like and Frank's their dad, right? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> Danny DeVito is a fucking. National treasure. He's a national treasure. <laughs> oh, speaking of Danny DeVito, we watched the uh, new Haunted Mansion. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's not, it's not... I don't know. It got a lot of flack, but I don't know what people are expecting. I don't know. It's cute. I like that. I forgot that it happened. I like that family spooky stuff. That's fair. You know, like Hocus Pocus and all that. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was... He's it's wholesome. Yeah, and Danny DeVito, he's in it, and he's fucking... He's funny, because he's... He's fucking Danny he's DeVito. He's Danny DeVito. I want to talk more, but I think we need to get into the episode. This is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy Tommy and Jacob's Jacob's mixtape. I'm glad I caught it. Yeah, that's that's good. It's good you caught it. Oh, God damn it. What is it? (sighs) What would we have done? Just been like, okay, I guess we're doing a banter instead. I don't fucking know. I mean, probably. Probably, yeah. Oh, damn it. I'm I, forgetting what it says in the first one. Do you remember what the Quato thing and the belly, what it says? It's like... I reviewed the wrong movie. Give me more. Oh, God damn it. I can't remember. But uh, it's not, that's not in this movie, though. Hello. We were reviewing the re- remake of to the 2012's Total Recall. Yes. Total Recall. Remake? It's a remake. Remake. Yeah. Ish, b- uh, no. No. Uh, this, this is something, uh, weirdly, something I'm going to talk about a lot in this episode. It's just this kind of weird era of a lot of reboot remakes that were coming out of like 90s and 80s stuff. Yeah. That no one really asked for, but we got anyways. Yeah. It was like, remember that really cool idea from the 90s? Why don't we just try to do it again, the, but with a twist? <laughs> the only one that I think from the ones I've seen that were actually pretty successful at it was dread. That one was cool. 
because that wasn't that's a re- fair. That was like a complete. But that followed the comics more accurately, didn't it? Yeah, it was its own thing. It didn't have anything. It to followed do. the source material. Yeah. And it was just really cool. Unlike this movie. And it was really violent and really stupid, but it was really cool for that reason. <laughs> like. You also got your boy Carl Urban in it. Yeah. I love Carl Urban. Hi, Carl Urban. <laughs> like he watches this. <laughs> I love Carl Urban. I think he's funny. Um, On a good day, sometimes you look like him. <laughs> On a good day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I didn't really mean it to come out is, like that. <laughs> it's, well, it's on the internet forever. Um, but yeah, so we're doing Total Recall 2012. Yeah. Um, it was an Arnold, an Arnie Schwarzenegger movie from 1990, but originally a short story from Philip K. Dick. Yes, who keeps popping around. I know. Right? Accidentally those, doing yeah. Philip K. Dick. Um, well, really quick, uh, those who are not familiar possibly with what Total Recall, do you want to give us the synopsis? Oh, yeah. Um, a man, like th- this one, um, a man sick of his dead-end job finds out that he is a sleeper agent with information only he has to end a war. But is that really They it? didn't really do it that much in this one like they did in the original, to, in my they no, one hundred percent. It's weird. They really lost that inception. Is, is it, it? Is it not? Yeah, yeah, that really. This was pretty straightforward. It's like there's only like a handful of moments where you're like, wait, hold on. Yeah, but but then they kind of prove. The kind. It kind of seems like they're gonna go that way, and then they go, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, they pull, <laughs> they pull it back real quick, <laughs> which is just so weird because that was kind of one of the most, especially for this what this film was in the 90s to this rendition now that kind of was one of its saving graces was that whole because even the 90s one is really 90s oh yeah but that idea of you never really know what is true and isn't yeah is kind of cool like the devil's advocate yeah and to kind of it almost felt like they didn't think we were smart enough to follow along with the possibility of like that in this. I don't. I just think it kind of became it lost, like in yeah. the story. That the, I don't know. This just became a really. This just really is. It's a, a chase s- movie, just like sci-fi action movie. Yeah, where it's like plot point shootout, plot point shootout, yeah, plot point chase scene, then a shootout, then plot point. You know, it's, it's like, like plot point hot, 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 hot hit cake, make and sell, kicking ass, dude. I got zoo. I can't see this movie. <laughs> everybody, everybody, you got Colin Farrell. You got Kate Beckinsale. You got Jessica, Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel. You got Brian Cranston. Brian, you're you're into that. <laughs> Bill Nye, which I'm into. You got three boobs. Which why? That's like the one thing that made it through from the original, <laughs> right? I know. I was sitting there. I was like, hold on a second. From. The original movie. That's what we took other from it. Other than like the 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 core idea of like the memory implantation, the three boobs make the fucking cut. Something I will give this movie too is like praise is they real. It's kind of pretty incredible what you can get away with with PG thirteen these I days. No, I was they there, really pushed it. When like I saw it was PG thirteen, I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I saw her like bloop, and three boobs popped out, and I was like, this is PG thirteen. Yeah, and I heard a fuck. I don't know how many other ones there were. I, I think you're one. allowed. Two? What's the rule? One or two? Three. Is it three? I thought I heard a couple, but I know one for sure. Yeah, and even like the, the you know, they're seeing, you know, they're taking stuff. It was just more, it was violent. So I'm really curious to. But what. not a lot of blood. It's violent yeah. because of the shooting. There's not a lot of gore. Though. But also, they replaced a lot of the deaths with synthetic robots. robots. Yeah, they did the 90s cartoon thing. Yep. Yeah. You can get a workaround with that bullshit. Um, so, because like, because like the one with Arnold, very, very graphic. Yeah. We're talking a lot of. We, we need to get into like who like directed, you know, came out. Like we're, we're yeah, I know, but that was natural. That was nice. That's true. Got into it. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> yes, so just to like, make it clear, we're not doing the original. Yeah, one, we're not doing nineteen, which I could see some people being like. I'm kind of disappointed we didn't actually after watching this, but also I'd never seen this one, 
So that's why I wanted to. Well, we're definitely going to get it because, you know, the original one is kind of one of those sci-fi classics. Yeah. You know, so it's we're going to get around to that one at some point. Mm-hmm. But I just same thing. I remember had I've also I, I remember had seen this and not really remembering much about it. But I don't blame you. I'm also just right. Um, <laughs> I've also just been really obsessed with this. This thing, the thing I said I was going to kind of focus like focus on is this weird remake thing i've been slowly picking away at them and this is just also one of those ones where you're like yeah well it's not hyper focus on that uh, like you know i mean i mean obviously we want to talk about the movie itself well that's part of it <laughs> uh yeah so total recall released august 3rd 2012 mm-hmm. um was like we said based on um Phil K Dick's we can remember it for you host wholesale. So hold on a second. In this one specifically, there is no writing credit given to Phil K Dick. I think that's because of the trickle effect of from Phil yeah. K Dick to Total Recall 90. Yeah. I wonder if also if maybe like Philip K. Dick's maybe estate, if this is like if they have like a, like a copyright estate thing, which most like popular writers like his does, if maybe they didn't want the credit for it, because the writing credits, which are fucking absurd on IMDb, um, uh, uh, it's clear that they truly did remake the 1991. They didn't. They weren't trying to cre- recreate Philip K. Dick's novel. Mm-mm. They were doing because that. if they were, it would have had. They would have still. It still would have been having so much information about Mars because that was a big thing with Philip K. Dick. Um, that was weird. I kept waiting for that to happen. Uh, Melina. Melina wasn't even a character in the short story. Jessica Biel's character. Mm-hmm. So like, they're like, it's like. And they're like even like for press, they're like, no, we're trying to do more accurate to or more true to Philip K. Dick's novel. And it's like, no, you're fucking not. Like, I think like the producers were just saying that, mm-hmm. you know, they thought they were, but it's like, no, dude, someone just like watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Recall a lot, and well, Paul Verhorn who directed it. Would be kind of you know, interesting to watch the director's cut because I also could be studio. Did you read what the difference with the director's cut was in this one? No, did you? They're kind of two different movies. There's like 12 minutes more, um, and apparently Hauser, Colin Farrell's character, he's like actually working for a uh, Cohagen, but then turns turn coats at the end or something. And Melina is like the daughter to Matthias. And that's just, it's a, honestly just a bunch of unneeded stuff. And also Ethan Hawke plays Hauser before, like apparently when the, when the uh, UFB, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, get their hand on Hauser. They do like, they like reconstruct his face. UBF. U, U, UBF. United Britain Federation. Okay. Yeah. Um, not the United Federation of Britain. Oh, that could be it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who so cares? <laughs> when he when he finds the key, which is the piano key, which is like that's kind of clever, cool. Um, uh, and then like he's like talking to himself. That was originally Ethan Hawke. So they did like a face thing too. Yeah. Hmm. Which I don't know. Maybe that's from Philip K. Dick's original, but yeah, I don't know. UFB, United Federation of Britain. Yeah, what motherfucker? Anyways. She's got face. <laughs> yeah, so our director... <laughs> so the director for this film <clears throat> is Len <coughs> Wiseman. <coughs> get it up. Get it up. Um, who is known for such things as Underworld. He, he, he gave us Underworld. Yeah. He live, created that shit. Live free or die hard. Number he directed that. And that's the fourth, fourth. one. Mm-hmm. Um, and two episodes of Swamp Thing. That's all I wrote down. Uh, he was an executive producer on it too for all ten episodes. I think he was kind of like a, a like a, he was a big person behind the scenes of that. A lot of stuff that he's uh, produced, he also like directed a couple things for. Hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was kind of like one of the leading hands behind Swamp Thing as well. God, that's that's a big bummer that got canceled. I know that was a cool show. It was fun. It was real Until funny. the end, because they had to wrap it up. Well, they even left it with a cliffhanger still. Yeah. They wrapped it up real quickly. The special effects got real <laughs> got gnarly. <laughs> that was so weird. That was such a weird moment in TV like 
t- timeline to watch that kind yeah. of for those who did watch it, you know. <laughs> yeah. There were a few of us, I believe. Um so yeah, Len Wiseman, director. Uh apparently so really quick, also I feel like I think I read somewhere, don't hundred percent quote me, the producers, the executive producers from the original did help produce or like back this remake from happening. So it was like some producers some producers were like, Yeah, let's redo the thing we did. 22 years ago, let's just, or 20 years ago, let's do it again. Let's just do it again. Just do it again. Um, writers on this, I only have the credited actual screenplay writers for this one specifically. Yeah. Because I, they have credited on IMDb, and I think like for like WGA, Writers Guild uh, shit, they have all of the writers that were part of the 1991 credited as like based on screenplay by based on story by and all that stuff don't really want to didn't want to go through all those like six to eight people or whatever the fuck it was yeah um so i have written down kurt wimmer um who we have done with ultraviolet he wrote ultra ultraviolet i did it again with ultraviolet i thought thought of it on flux Flux. god damn it so good buddy we did do ultraviolet. Uh-huh. That's when did we do that? Yeah, we did ultraviolet episode twenty nine. Yeah. Um, and he also is the writer for Equilibrium. It was like the two big ones that I saw. Um, one I like a lot, Street Kings. Mm-hmm. It's like, did, was he also a writer for Law Abiding Citizen? Did I see that? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Street Kings, the not as good Keanu Reeves Training Day. Oh, same kind of vibe, gritty cop <laughs> thing, but it's just not, not as as well done. Looking at his fucking stuff, his his things are always kind of like it's like an interesting idea, just like very poorly explored or executed. Most recently, the beekeeper, right? Yeah, I know. Just like what the like? I told you, I told you, I told you that. Like, I heard that, and I thought it was a joke. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was like, I think it was the Mad Lib guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's funny. And then I saw a trailer. I was like, you're fucking kidding me, Brad. <laughs> what? I thought that was a joke. Maybe it was a joke that became real. Could you imagine? He was like, I got, the, I got an idea about a beekeeper who's going to start J- Jason Statham. And he like sells it. In the, and it was his producer's like, I'll give you $10 million. What, what? The only way <laughs> I would be into that that concept is if it was like they got Guy Ritchie and it was like Lockstock or something like that. Kyrie where he was like directing the beekeeper and it was like it was like cottony jason statham from like yeah lock stalker <laughs> you know like that real like don't want to take these bees you want to take these bees <laughs> <laughs> because also because those movies that works it's like he it grabs movies. a fucking honeycomb filled with bees and shoves it into the guy's face yeah and gets stung to death like guy Ritchie's like action sense of humor it like works weirdly to me <laughs> He releases a giant puff of pollen to blind a guy. All right. Anywho. Um, second writer uh, credit on this is uh, Mark Bomback, um, who I noticed was also a writer with uh, Live Free or, uh, or Die Hard. So I think maybe there was a Len Wiseman, Mark Bomback like connection. You know? Duo thingy. Yeah. Like maybe like Len Wiseman liked working with him on that. Or vi- maybe it was they worked on this and then they went together to do Live Free or Die Hard. Is that Live Free or Die Hard came out before this, I want to say? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Mark Bomback, also a writer on The Wolverine with uh, Juhu Jackman as Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> because of all the, all the other people. <laughs> and also I noticed he was a screenplay writer for um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So... Um. I think he's just got like a good sense of like action, like writing action stuff, action sequences, probably, you know? Yeah, that's what it kind of feels like. Uh, but yeah, no, but the Planet 8 series. I love those movies. I'm so excited for the new one. I know, it looks so good. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, writers and directors um, uh, for this one specifically, and the ones who ruined it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's a little harsh. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's this is real. Yeah. Like it's not. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so uh, starring wise, we got our lead, um, Colin Farrell, who we've done two other times. 
Yeah, we've done in oh, three actually. We've done this is number four. What is two? Um, we did Seven Psychopaths, The Lobster, and uh, Banshees of <laughs> Oh, Banshees <laughs> of Any Sheer and Any Sheer Any Sheer Sheer and Sheer Ed Sheeran Ed Sheeran The Banshees of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Oh, Misty, I call back. The <laughs> um, yeah, um, he plays Hauser, our secret agent guy. Um, or uh, Quaid. Quaid. I mean, they call him Hauser because that's the secret agent. I am just, I'm going with the name they call him the most. They end up calling him Hauser the most because they just yell Hauser. Yeah, they just <laughs> Hauser. It's like a, <laughs> a high school football coach, right? But it was Douglas Quaid, right? It was his. A civilian name Doug. Oh Quaid? yeah, Dougie. Yeah, Dougie. Yeah, Doug. Um, yeah, and most uh, recently, Colin Farrell is uh, the Penguin. The Penguin from the Batman. The Batman. The Batman. The Batman from the Batman. And apparently, he's gonna have his own show. I'm on the way. Did I tell you to try to watch it again? I couldn't. I uh, I kind of watched like I, I caught the sorry like the middle-ish end. Um, on television the other uh, like a month ago or so, and they actually kind of kept me kept me into it. I get it like that, but sitting there, eight o'clock at night, I was like, I'm so bored. This is so slow. I mean, I definitely fell asleep watching it. Well, I mean, it was at the end of the night for me, but I need it too. I need the second one to come out, and I hope it comes out a little more. What about Joker? What did they do? Huh? The new Joker with Walking Phoenix and Lady. Gaga. I could be. S- not more uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against anything. I just, it's one of those weird sequels that I don't get it. Like, I know, I know. I just Same. rewatched The Joker and I thought, I was like, oh, this is like, it was a one good of those, standalone. Yeah, it was good. Just, it was a cool psychological <clears throat> thing. Just leave Joker it. as taxi driver. Cool. Yeah, let's take it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. Why are we doing a sequel? I don't. Money. And who knows? Maybe it's good. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> um, all right, I got uh, Kate Beckinsale <clears throat> next because she's kind of like you know the antagonist more we've than anybody. Never done. Yeah, no, we haven't. Uh, Which, she plays also, Lori. I don't. Re- I've never really seen her in anything other than Underworld. Click. I've never seen Click. I've never seen Pearl Harbor. Kind of refused at this point. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've never actually sat down and watched Pearl Harbor. Um, she's one of those people that's really, really famous to me, and I can't tell you why. Because of Underworld. But I'm like, that's it. I mean, that was, I loved those. I mean, <laughs> I mean, came back and so. Came, vampire came back and so. Werewolf Hunter. <laughs> How old was I? 14 or whatever. Yeah. Sexual awakenings. Yeah. <laughs> when she got emotional, her eyes turned blue. Yeah. Well, her eyes were always blue. No, the, the vampires, when they got like angry or horny, their oh, eyes turned yeah. blue. Um, like bright blue. Uh, I mean, the only other thing I've kind of really seen her in other than this is uh, most recently she was in a comedy movie, uh, Fool's Paradise, that Charlie Day wrote, directed, and starred in. That sounds familiar. It's he plays like a mute, like during the like silent movie era, not a silent movie era, but like golden. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. But yeah, she plays Laurie. Um, yeah, she kicks was, ass in this movie. When I was, she's like a fucking Terminator. Yeah, the only thing I couldn't really take was her like bad guy dialogue. Oh, dude, the dialogue in this movie was just god awful. He, just the, the constantly like jokes about being married, but they're not really married. But give me a kiss, baby. That and... wasn't it. I feel like that was on an honest attempt of them to add the humor that was in the original one in the 1991. Mm-hmm. Because there is a scene where Arnold, yeah, he, but that's he like kills one, her and he says, it's like one scene, right? There's a couple of scenes, uh-huh. but like, like it's not, she's, they take her and make her the, like Michael Ironside or whatever his name is in the first one is like the guy that's chasing yeah. Arnold oh, through it yeah, all. Yeah. They kind of turned her into that for this one. Because like even in the, so yeah. in the original one, when Arnold, like when she oh, like. Oh, Van Helsing. That's, that's another one. That yeah. I a lot. Um, he like shoots her, kills her. And he's like, I guess I just signed the divorce papers or something like that. Like, <laughs> You know, I don't know why that was so jarring, but it was. Who? What was? Your Arnold. I, didn't, oh. I just wasn't expecting it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Who's in um? <clears throat> who's what is going on? Um. Who's in a? Uh, the Strangers with her boyfriend from Underworld. Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler. Okay, yeah. I was putting her and Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, I was putting. I could see that Kate Beckinsale and Liv, Liv Tyler's role in Strangers probably because of what's his name is in it. 
Scott Speedman. Scott Speedman. Because of Underworld. Yeah. So I was a Crete and I was like, I swore. But I was like, as I was thinking, about it, I was like, I swear she was like in this slasher thing. And then there's, there's, there's one. The, oh, vacancy, vacancy with Luke Wilson. Then I, then that started to. <laughs> Shall we move on to Jessica? Biel? Yeah. Up next, we had Jessica <laughs> Biel, who's Melina. Who, who we talked about in episode 117 New Year's, New Year's Eve, Eve, which, which I, I forgot. Don't, I don't remember. Her. I she's pregnant. <laughs> she's the one that's like pregnant, and they're don't like either. trying to race to who have the baby. Don't either. First. That, don't, really? Don't. I do not remember a <laughs> single thing about that movie. You don't remember Ashton Kutcher and uh, Rachel, or the fucking chick that uh, Leah Michelle in the elevator? Are you sure you're not talking about Valentine's Day? Because nope, I have no idea what you're talking. Catherine about. Catherine Heigl is in it. I don't want to say. And you say that, and with a wrong com, I'm thinking of 27 dresses. I can literally <laughs> fill in anything you say with a scene from another rom- rom-com. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's it's really might as well, it might as well shouldn't have happened. That's I, really funny. I, I was sitting there like really racking my head of like, what the hell happened in that movie? There's a really sad one where the, like, the old man dies in the hospital when he's like, there's, oh man. I'm, actually, the movie's starting to come together for me now. <laughs> I have zero recollection of anything you're talking about. You know what would be really funny? I think if I was to hit play on it and you just saw like the first like five oh, minutes, you'd be, like, you'd be like, oh, yeah. this, this hot piece of trash. Yeah, no, um, no, no, zero, zero recollection of anything about that movie. We didn't have a lot of good things to say about it. I, I clearly. <laughs> um, she was most uh, recently for me. I watched that uh, mini series Candy. Yeah, she was. In. I need to see that. Stuff. That was good. I hear she's really good. She in was that. great in that. All right, um, if you you had you have to pick between having going on a date with Kate Beckinsale or Jessica Biel, Colin Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can you take off your shirt? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's I don't know. That's a weird. I feel on the spot. And, I know. I know. You don't have to answer. I don't want to answer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jessica Biel, uh, Blade Three illusionist. So we probably did talk about her in Blade. Blade. Did we talk about the third one at all? We probably did. We did review of Blade. I forgot that we did Blade. Yeah. <laughs> it was like we did like a did we do like an MCU before MCU thing? Uh, yeah, that's right. Oh my god. I was like, wait. Oh what? yeah, yeah. We did Blade and Punisher. Yeah. Yeah, before Fucking that, a, yeah. Oh my god. Oh have we done too many of these now? <laughs> hey, we're on episode 180. I mean, I've written down for her um uh the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake because it's actually like out of remakes. Oh really yeah, yeah. I, I was just so, huh? Nothing. Just her run around the white tank top. There's there's a couple of reasons why I remember that movie. Yeah, that, I, that's no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, there's not a big vampire lady here to peg me. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then I just put down uh our villain villain yeah, leader same. guy, uh Brian Cranston who plays Cohagen. Um, most recently, uh, he is in, not to be confused with Copenhagen the Chew. <laughs> he's an Argyle, uh, known for I don't know Breaking Bad, Malcolm in the Middle. That's exactly what I wrote down. Just Breaking Bad, and Malcolm in the Middle. He's in the first of the 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 new King of Monsters franchise, Godzilla. Yeah, well, no, that's not part of that franchise. That's that's its own separate Godzilla. It's not part of the King Kong mm-hmm. thing. No, no fucking way. No, it's just, yeah, it's its own separate Godzilla. Are you sure? One hundred percent. Yes. Hmm. I always thought that was. I have been meaning to rewatch that series, anyways, because we have the new one coming out. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Printing money, <laughs> and I'm gonna help with that. Uh, damn it! I had a joke, and now it's gone. I think. Brian Cranston joke. Oh no! Oh, uh, ooh, ah, uh, uh, ooh. He, uh, he's in the Power Rangers movie. He's Zed, Lord, or not Zed. Uh, Z- Z- the, who's uh, the blue face? Oh my God, Zordon. Yeah, is that Thank right? You. Yeah. Okay, I don't know where I pulled oh, that. Oh my God! I was like, no, the, I was like, no, Zed's the bad guy. Oh my God! Yeah, Zordon. Brian Cranston is Zordon in the Power Rangers reboot. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that was another one that got they canceled that too. He's also a fucking. He was one of the uh 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 uh, uh in the costume through the original Power Rangers like uh nineties show. He's 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 a bad guy in one of them actually. Was that why they made him Zordon? No, it just happened to be oh. yeah. 
That was another thing, though, because at first that one wasn't great, but it definitely had potential to kind of do it's so much potential. And they like let it to Tommy. I liked it so much, actually, as a Power Rangers I, fan. I thought it was fun. Yeah. You know, a um, couple of honorable mentions. Um, uh, Bokeem Woodbine, who is in, I tried rewatching the Halo series, couldn't, couldn't commit, but yeah, uh, Doug's best friend slash keeper i guess would if that's what it is yeah yeah i guess um bill nye who's bill nye not the science guy we talked about and still crazy he's Mm -hmm. the bad guy in underworld he is the bad guy well a lot of underworld in here yeah uh and then i just thought it was funny to remark uh, then joe uh john cho john cho and uh will yun lee which i just thought was funny because that's such bit parts, but I guess what if, when this falls for them in their careers. Yeah, they're like John Cho is coming from. He's coming <clears> out of Harold like, and Kumar. And yeah, stuff. like comedy kind of stuff more than anything. And American Pie. Yeah. He was one of the MILF kids in American Pie. One of the MILF kids? Yeah, that, that like coin Stifler's mom as a MILF. I didn't realize he was an American Pie. Yeah, he's weirdly, a background character. Weirdly, when I think about him now, I just think of Star Trek. I now, th- I mean, that, yes, I, I actually, I, I can't get Cowboy Bebop out of my head anymore. I liked it, okay? <laughs> and I was a big Cowboy Bebop fan. I enjoyed it too until the end. I didn't like the quick whatever the fuck Ed was thing at the end. I had a, like, a weird, I felt weird about the villain. I liked the exploration of it. I did too, but that actor like really gave me the heebie-jeebies, which I was like, "That's good. That's kind of the point." Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Um, and then Will Yun Lee was the original body of what's his name in Altered Carbon. He was the the actual the first, yeah, the first rendition, first. yeah. And then, but yeah, that's what I, I was like, "Oh, you look." And it's weird too. It's weird when you watch movies like this where it's kind of before they start really getting momentum because it makes you think they're gonna have like more of the story mm-hmm. and then, like show up for 30 seconds. Oh and yeah. You're like, you're like, oh, that's right. You didn't have much of a career yet. Like, Oh, okay. It's like, this was the, you got this and then the people are and like, and then it oh, start, yeah. started. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This movie is 20, uh, 12 years old at this point. Yeah. Sense. Um, how many movies did you see this year? Mm, I counted 31. I counted 42. That makes sense for 2012. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 it's the same as I got last time with Tucker and Dale versus evil. But I originally got 39, and then I went back through, and I was like, oh, yeah, I did see that. I just didn't recognize the title because I didn't. That'll happen sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, reviews? Scores? Stuff? Yeah. I'm going right. to Tummy's, Tummy's Corner. Well, you got to give us our scores first. Yeah. <coughs> She's in the Aviator? Kate Beckinsale? Yeah. I've never seen the Aviator, so. Who the fuck is she in the Aviator? Um, so on IMDb, this has got a 6.2 rating, <laughs> which... <laughs> Surprisingly high, actually. Because on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 31% tomato meter reading and a 47 audience score. So, yeah, no, IMDb 6.2 is kind of generous. Well, even Underworld Evolution, which is the second one, has 6.7. That's, to me, better, but it's still just a fucking action. It's the same fucking thing, but with vampires instead of space guns I don't remember the second one that's when Marcus the other vampire leader wakes up and he's the vampire hybrid not the werewolf hybrid and he has like wings and he's trying to release his it's like everything you're saying to me sounds familiar but I have no memory like visual recollection of any of that that's another example of because Underworld Two was cool. I think Underworld has like a seven out of ten, and that franchise just went. I thought you just said under no Underworld Two had six point seven. What Un- Underworld One has seven. What what's you just said Evolution though? What's what Underworld uh, Underworld Evolution is the second <clears throat> one. The second one? Yes. Un- Underworld Two. It Underworld Two is called Underworld Evolution, and that's got a six point seven. That's got a six point seven. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said something. Else. Uh, who knows? We can play it. What back. are the fucking reviews of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, so on Metacritic, this is a 43 with a mixed or average, uh, nine positive, 25 mixed, seven negative. That was kind of 
I thought it was going to be way more. A lot more red. negative. A lot more in the red. So something I want to like say too is off the bat is that the amount of comparisons in the review, mm-hmm. I tried really hard to not. Like I have fine reviews that did a lot of comparison the, type stuff. Yeah, that did yeah. its own kind of thing. Um, so um, eighty-eight out of a hundred. Uh, Joe Williams at the St. Louis Post Dispatch. The richly constructed first hour is so superior to any feat of sci-fi spe- uh, sp- uh, uh, spectacle since Minority Report that the bland aftertaste of the chase finale is quickly forgotten. Mm-hmm. Which I was mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, I kind of saw that because the the build up to what our conflict is pretty solid for like a sci fi thing, yeah. And then it just really just becomes this mundrum shoot 'em up, like we were saying, plot point shoot, plot point shoot, mm-hmm. and that was kind of a bummer because it. And I thought the inter- I thought it was kind of interesting to bring up Minority Report because. That is a pretty unique and really cool sci-fi cop thriller. What? I've never seen it. I know, and it's so fucking weird to me. <laughs> no, it's weirder? Weirder to me? She hasn't seen it. That doesn't surprise that me. That really surprised me for being like a cop, for knowing her mother and murder detective stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> but, it's, but she cool. sees Tom Cruise and immediately thinks it's something. It's nice. actually, I have to say, it's probably in my top ten sci-fi movies, and definitely my favorite Tom Cruise movie. Is my Minority Report? Wait, is this? Wait, hold on a second. This is not the one with Jamie Fox, right? That's Collateral. That's Collateral. Okay, yeah, that's probably that's up there too. Because he does not even Tom Cruise in that. He's just he's a, a psychopath, fucking sociopath. Yeah, <laughs> um, I need to see that still too. Um, I got our boy. Um, on here too, Roger Ebert. Yes, <laughs> uh, and I thought this was an interesting thing. So Roger Ebert, it's just Chicago Sun Times gave it a seventy-five. Uh, Total Recall is well-crafted, high-energy sci-fi. Like all stories inspired by Philip K. Dick, it deals with intriguing ideas. It never touched me emotionally, though, the way the nineteen ninety film, uh, nineteen ninety film did. And strictly speaking, that isn't necessary. And I was like, that's fair. That was a very long-winded way of saying eat the carrot. He's like, he said three out of four. I guess what he gave it. Three out of this four. is a seventy-five out of. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Which again, coming out of the woodwork, Roger Ebert surprising me. I mean, yeah, he was just like I. I took it for what it yeah, was. Like, yeah, like um, yeah. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Now we're getting into the. <whistles> no, that one didn't have the. Nope. Bit 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 bit. <laughs> Where are you? There's a lot of mix, so let's take it. I legit stuttered so hard yesterday, the other day, that I sounded like Porky Pig. I just wanted to say that. Piss off, Lou. That's all, folks. That was more Bobby Boucher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <so> 50, <laughs> uh, 50 out of 100, Amy... Biancoli at San Francisco Chronicle for all of its dazzling rendered cityscapes and nonstop action. This revamped total recall is a bland thing, bloodless, airless, humorless, and featureless with or without the triple bosom prostitute. <laughs> that one just made me laugh. That's uh, that's such a fucking good and call out. It's like, again, I don't want to, you know, uh, what we want to do here is just kind of talk about movies and I don't want to be like a total dick, but it's, it really kind of was, it became just this feature. That's a good way of putting it. A featureless. It looked good, but nothing about it stood out. And anyways, um, literally the first thing I wrote down was uninspired. Yeah. There's nothing. Like, I was like, I, yeah. Um, and then our negative at the very bottom of the bottom with a 20 out of 100 by Joe Numier at the New York Daily News. There's something sadly poetic about a movie dealing with disapp- disappearing memories that vanishes from your mind while you watch it. Man, that's rough and so true. No, but even that, that to me, I was like, I get that. But that's because, again, that's compares, comparing it to the first one. Is it, though? A, because it doesn't really talk about the memory vanishing thing. It does in this really. That's the whole. That's the whole thing of recall. 
but it, but they, that's what I'm saying. That's what we were talking about earlier. It kind of lost that, that whole yeah. nuance of, is it real? Is it not? The second, that whole scene with his partner, his friend, yeah. where he's trying to pull him out yeah. of the, and we have, you as an audience member are like, oh shit, is it, is, is this actually happening? And then they kind of show immediately. I mean, you could argue that as an audience, you could be like, oh, well, it's just his mind continuing on the blah, blah, but. That's what I took it as, yeah. But it's not written to me in a way that it's like you you're doing you're doing that for them. You're doing that for because you know what Total Recall originally was. Yeah, I wonder if I mean? that might be the thing is like because of the knowledge of what Total Recall is as like a Philip K story or from the 90s maybe I guess more than anything is like that question of is this real or is this not? And because I also like everything just seems so far fetched as like for, well, okay. Are we, are you done with yeah, no, yeah. No. one of the things that they do is that they allude into a sense at the beginning before he goes to the chair and before he goes to recall is these little like nuggets of, Douglas Quaid buried deep in there, right? Is that what you're getting at? What do you mean buried deep in there? Like the piano and sorry, go ahead, good continue. The opposite of that. His desires. Mm-hmm. He lives this mundane life. He wants so much more. On the the um what is it called? The train thing that goes through? Oh, um the fall. The fall. Um the book that he has so that was really cool. Is a personally. spy book. He's reading a spy book. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to be a Philip K. Dape. K. Philip, Phil, Philip K. Dick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Book. Um, he's reading a spy book. He wants to, he's like, I really, I really want to learn how to play the piano. His friend is more like, I mean, yeah, you could, because you'd look at it either which way. You can take it as like his friend is, you know, handler and like being like, you got to just get the shit out of your mind, man. And just like live your normal life. Um, but then, like, the dude that gives him the recall fucking card, like, they would have had control over that. They wouldn't let someone give him this. They fucked with his memory. Why would they let him? Why would they let someone give him a thing to go and fuck? There would have been operatives following him into this goddamn fucking district, red light district fucking place to make sure he doesn't fuck anything up. Well, that's even the thing. He's going off of protocol of what he's generally been doing. I don't get, I don't, didn't really understand, like, so he worked for, okay, no, I just answered my own question in my head, never mind. Well, can, what, do you want to share our, your journey? <laughs> no, I was just like, I don't really, I didn't really, like, until just now, I was like, why do they keep him alive? Oh, because he was a turncoat, so they thought, oh, if we keep him alive, he'll sooner or later take us to Mathis, but then, if they wiped his memory of anything to do with Mathis, how was he ever going to bring them? Yeah. But you know what I mean? So, I was so like, and that's why like the things that just kind of like, even just like it, it, it kind of like in vanilla sky, when you start to hear the dialogue that's being spoken at him from these people, it doesn't feel like real conversation. It feels like, like a, like a fantasy or like a, it feels like a novel being written for you. Mm hmm. It feels fabricated. His constant, like, noticing recall around him. Like, even at the very end, he looks up and he sees recall. And there's that moment of, like, is this, like... So am I still in this? Am I in this? Or is this reality? But then, like, the idea is, like, he accepts that his reality with Melina. Which, if you think about it, if Harry showed up to pull him the fuck out, and then he fucking shot his friend, that means he's so far deep. He's not coming out. Yeah, he's just now in this... But even then, too, it's like, it weirdly, I think that they, and this kind of thing, you can go really heavy handed with this kind of stuff and really shove it down people's throat. If the, I feel like they just lightly peppered, lightly peppered this concept of him living in this simulation because of recall. And that just wasn't enough. And I kind of now thinking, too, is like, there is actually certain types of movies and stories and stuff that just really don't work for doing a remake or a reboot yeah. or anything. And something like this where it's about well, the the 
the differences between reality and make believe Mm -hmm. and really what is the difference you know like he's saying at the recall thing of like john cho's character yeah Yeah. it's just you know memories are just what your brain creates as reception to your outside world and so was it we skip the middleman so it's like something like that it's kind of like you already kind of it's like trying to remake fight club (laughs) <laughs> and trying to watch a remake of Fight Club when you already know the secrets, the twist at yeah. the end. Or remake The Sixth Sense or... Yeah, yeah. Like any, the others. Any of these movies where it's really... It is a, it's a movie that if you, if you could, you wish you could erase it so you could watch Unless it again. Unless it's like maybe 50, 60 years out. Where it's been long of, enough that people have forgotten about it, sure. Yeah. But, or maybe you're like, like let's say, uh, uh, like how they re, kind of remade uh, Rear Window, Alfred Hitchcock with... Uh, 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 I forget the, uh, Jimmy Stewart, and but they did Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf. They took the premise of Rear Window yeah. and made it into a teenager who's on house arrest. So it's like the same story, but now now it's modernized. Well, yeah, and I guess on that note, a good thing to do with this would have been like since you're talking about the 1990 version, which was a very shoot 'em up, rated R action, Arnold Schwarzenegger in prime mm-hmm. that era. You should have gone Biggest star in the world, yeah. Yeah, you should have gone the Philip K. Dick way and made it more of a psychological thriller mm-hmm. about what is reality. Yes, and rather than just make another, you know, in an era of 2012 where there's a lot of well, this kind of crap. But that's why they're making it because they're just like, well, let's make another one. Yeah, no, and that's kind of just what this feels like. But that's what's like funny about it too is like I've definitely seen worse sci-fi movies ultraviolet yeah i've definitely <laughs> seen better like this was oh, no, <laughs> this was just really like <laughs> yeah that's that's why i wrote down uninspired yeah it's just and, and even for like it's not really a well, that's one thing about these kind of in the future sci-fi things too you know blade runner let, let's not even talk about plot blade runner just as an aesthetic was insane you know and even this world i thought the coolest thing and i kind of even was like that's kind of cool was the the skyscraper. now we're so overpopulated and on top of each other that there are housing and markets built around big ben big mm. ben is now almost like a structure a structural pillar for the rest of this and the elevators that like work on a fucking like yeah Willy, like, the Willy wonka <laughs> glass elevator it goes yeah. anyway which way you know <laughs> like even, but I was like, oh, that's cool. But I was like, it's not really, that's, I think one of the coolest things visually about your movie is the elevator. That's not a good sign. <laughs> the first time that I said that was cool was, uh, when Kate Beckinsale was chasing him after he first like gets out of the apartment and she shot the glass and then jumped through it. I was like, huh, that was cool. I was like, the, <laughs> like the only thing I was like, huh, cool. Yeah. There was <laughs> some really basic action shit. Yeah. <laughs> And then the rest of it was like super fucking predictable. Like, when, well, but on that, yeah. on the jumping the window thing, my first thought was, oh, that's a strong table. <laughs> that was honest to God. Oh, I was thinking that too. Because like when she was shooting, and it's like, wasn't going through it. I was like, that's a thick table. Yeah. So she shoots through the table a couple of times, then full force lands on it. Like superhero jumps. Land, yeah, superhero land. Yeah. And then it was like, damn. Table of the future. <laughs> That's excellent wire work. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and then there's, it's just a lot of it was so predictable. Like even like uh, specifically in the action sequences um, when he's like on the he's like escaping in the car and the magnetic thing is supposed to be, and it's like he's trying to release the, the, the drop. So and I'm like, well. Of course, he. I was like, oh, he's going to have to do a drop. He can't do a drop. It was a safety feature. I'm like, well, he's going to fucking disable he's gonna it. it. He's going to disable <laughs> it somehow. And then he punch, 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 rips out whatever. Also, it's like it, there's so much of just like eat the carrot in this movie where you also you kind of have. To, that's where I kind of like lean so much into like this is part of all of the recall memory because it's it it, it feels so far. It's like he's learning all of these things and surviving at the exact right moment that he has to each fucking single time. Like as if he was in a spy novel, Mm -hmm. you know, like 
even at the very end when he gets shot and then he survives and then oh the twist it's Laurie again like play like you know like it 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 it, it which is so weird because like it plays out so much like what a spy novel spy story would play out as that it makes me feel like that he has to be in the memory. But then we're also just watching a basic ass action movie that could just be about like, Oh, and he was a spy the entire time. That's, you know what I mean? Well, that's what's as, as you're talking about it too. I'm like, that is actually kind of interesting because in conversation, this, this in conversation about what this plot is, is more interesting than actually watching it. Yeah. Because then there's like shots of like, you know, when you see her pick up that, that disguising collar thing Mm -hmm. you're like okay what yeah like that's for us the audience for it to make sense for her to pop up later but then you also have to remember that this is a company that makes memories so someone did write that but then why'd they show us that because we're just watching the Mm -hmm. you know so you start you start having the existential (laughs) crisis of like going down the rabbit hole of what is reality and what is it (laughs) but yeah I don't know and that's what I think it is and it's so funny because I'm always the one that gets so annoyed at like the 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 spinning top of no no it's so fucking like well is the inner is it and it's like they they just they needed to do it just a little bit more because it also I think with all of the 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 way the the plot comes out with the shoot em up plot shoot em up you kind of forget the whole Mm-hmm. And I guess that's kind of my point. I'm kind of saying it in different ways that you kind of forget about this whole memory thing and all the action. And so it isn't until the very, very end and they show the recall thing. You're like, oh, right. Yeah. We were dealing with the possibility that none of this was actually happening. I forgot about that. It's also at a certain point, like oh, what did I write down? It's like for it's a it's a strange departure from source material and original movie because like there's like you forget one that it's even total recall like the state like a remake of the fucking 90s movie mm-hmm. because of just like now there's like this, these robots synthetics and like the lack of mars like, like yeah that was weird like I thought that was really bizarre they put everything on earth and then also the fucking the fall that goes between the earth and whatever and also a big thing about this movie the 90s movie i don't know if it's the philip k dick novel um, is Mars having an inhabitable atmosphere. And that's the climax of the movie is them using the alien technology to create an inhabitable, breathable atmosphere on Mars. Mm-hmm. Like this is just like, Oh, re- like free the, free the colony. It's like, like such a different story of like what it came from as well. Yeah. And then another well, weird... Isn't, it, isn't like a big thing with the mutants, too? The like, Kuato! Yeah. Open your mind! <laughs> I was sitting there, I'm like, Who, where the fuck is the Kuato? When's the Kuato coming? What? Where's that? Open your mind! There was no open your mind. His mind was already open, I guess. I don't know. Hey, like... <laughs> open your mind. Well, and again, like... I, I'm not, I'm not going to like harbor like too much on this, but it's like going to what you're saying too. Cause even like the RoboCop remake, the whole part of that mm. is him dealing with being human to now being this. I actually think that's a, that's a pretty decent remake as well. But like the yeah. big plot of RoboCop is that is yeah. him rediscovering his man, his humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, guess what? They kept that in the remake because that's the only thing that gives RoboCop any character. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, he's just a fucking robot. Like, That's no killing per- people. That kills people. So it's like, yeah, this kind of did have this weird. You never felt like that's a, that's a kind of the problem, too, is that you're like, OK, so we have this Doug dude hates his life, hates his job. He lives. He's at the bottom of the totem pole, has to go on the space bus through the planet every day to get to work to make robots that are one day going to make him not have a job. OK, cool. Got it. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Ah, wait, no, he might, he might, we're not sure, he might be a sleeper agent who's a spy, and I don't give a shit. (laughs) I was like, I (laughs) don't care. I don't care about anyone at all at this point. So it's like the only saving grace is, all right, let's start tallying how many people they kill in this chase scene. Because we used to do that. Yeah, you know, it's like, because there's (laughs) nothing else going on. 
but now fatalities. Like, let's see how many cool deaths they yeah. do. And I swear to God, with that whole pulling the anti-magnet chamber thing, I really hope there wasn't someone in that minivan just chilling, listening to music. Because they flattened that thing like a goddamn pancake. <laughs> Just some dude waiting for the Uber Eats to get done so he can go pick it up and deliver it. Or he's like waiting for his daughter to come yeah, out. Yeah, waiting for his kid. His dog's at the groomer. He's about to go pick. Mm, 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 and boom. It's like, don't you forget <laughs> about me. Boom. <laughs> shout. Shout. Let, let it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love I, I really did in these action movies where there's just like you know michael bay level of just destruction, destruction yeah <laughs> and you're just kind of sitting there like there's so much collateral damage happening right now that's it's why kind they of bug- the sokovia accord in marvel movie <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a chase scene in like the second bond where he is just the very beginning is just ripping on through. the train no it's a car chase scene and they're going down like through Italy or some shit. I don't even remember. I just remember watching it. Skyfall? Yeah, I think it's Skyfall. Okay. The beginning of, oh, the beginning yeah. of Skyfall. Oh, yeah, when he dies. Or oh, dies. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. beginning of Skyfall. And he is just yeah. whipping around this small town. And I'm like, there are so many people just dying and they're going to cover it up. Yeah. <laughs> Gas leak on the hills of Italy. <laughs> Good old British intelligence. Yeah. MI6 coming for you. Um, anyways, that's. We just talked about like so many different movies there in that moment. Um, Did we? I don't know. <laughs> I wish we had like an instant replay button. That'd be cool. <laughs> I mean, I could rewind. No, no, no. I know. <laughs> just pop up a screen right here. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're at a, we're getting close to an hour, so okay. Yeah, but it's like it really is this whole thing. I'm gonna give for a sci-fi action movie. It's fine. It really it does what it's supposed to do. In a way, it just it's it, just, it's it, generic. It's generic, and it just really is such a bummer because it's kind of like, you know, with last week when we did Vanilla Sky, is the premise of Vanilla Sky alone was really interesting and really cool. Was it a little like we were saying Hollywoody artsy fartsy kind of was weird. What's really weird to think about is like unintentionally we just did two remakes. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> Because of Vanilla yeah. Sky being a remake of Abre los Ojos. Yeah, that's interesting. That was I like when that kind of yeah. Stuff and happened. this being you know remake and both kind of dealing with the fe- the idea of memory implantation. Re- what is actually re- because even is, Vanilla Sky talks about yeah. It's your memories. It's this is your yeah, reality now. Exactly. If you choose for it to be yeah. Um, both in a comatose kind of stasis kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just like, but you know, with Vanilla Sky, even though like you can say what you want about it and cruise and everything, it's on paper. It's premise was really interesting and yeah. pre- pretty well executed. This too on paper is kind of a cool, it's a Philip K. Dick novel. It's yeah. A Philip K. <laughs> yeah. You're talking, and even then it's like, you could have gone real pulpy. Like you're talking about a sleeper agent spy who's now been in like memory wiped and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, no matter which, that's the thing though. It's like, no matter which way you went with it of, he actually is a sleep. He is a sleeper agent that's reawakened, or he's just a dude using this weird recall vacation mm-hmm. program to do it. You didn't really lean enough each way to make it any more than just this kind of generic shoot 'em up sci fi thing, mm-hmm. which is fun. But mm. it makes me remember it's that specific moment when Harry is there trying to be like, "Dude, you're at recall." You need to fucking wake up. Oh yeah, what what makes him decide that that's real? He like looks at Jessica Biel. I think her tear. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Continue. No, I know. Literally, like, no. I hated that moment. I was like, what? Just <laughs> things in my mind can't cry. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Okay. I think it was like almost like more like I an acceptance of like I don't want this to be over. Maybe I don't want this to be real. But um, when. Like also, well, there's also like that uh, when Harry's like, Lori's even here. I had to call her at work, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Quaid Hauser, whoever the fuck he is, is like, you see, Lori wasn't at work last night. You're lying. You're yeah. lying. And it's like, do do you know how long you've been in this memory thing? She could fucking be at work, dude. 
I, well, no, but even then too, you know, she's not at work. Your mind knows that there's this whole se- like your mind right now is your great. If you, this is what's happening, your mind, your mind right now is your greatest enemy. Yeah. Your mind is going to do anything and everything to make this like dream make logic. You know, mm-hmm. the only way is like, you're going to have to have that kind of, I guess, lucid dream moment where you and your dream go, Oh shit, I'm dreaming. And then you, you know, but yeah, that's it. But like, yeah, like you don't know, but even then, yeah, that's a good point too. Cause even at this point, it's been a fucking minute of them running around. At least maybe half a day. Think well, of it's the, daytime. The, the, yeah. Yeah. It's like the middle of the day now. Yeah. So half a day. Because like the events of this movie take place in like, I want to say 40 years. Well, yeah. Because it was like he was had that whole fight running around thing with Lori in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Which I did a really appreciate at first when she showed up and she was still all disheveled and everything. I was like, oh, I thought they are going to do the bad guy chick thing they always do in these kind of movies suddenly she shows up in her her hot spy outfit it's gonna be oh. tight leather and boots no she had the hair in her face. yeah she was all like fucked her, up. her eyeliner got a little bit darker yeah but like you know there wasn't this like she took the time to go change her fucking boots yeah like, god i hate that when they do that with the bad guy yeah in anything like suddenly i was like, in skin tight whatever. well yeah anybody like any even if it's like you know the vampire lord or whatever the fuck like suddenly they're all in black they're like wait so they know my true intentions what <laughs> Gotta change. I got a peacock. Got a peacock. Let me fly. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is that from? <laughs> is that like a? Is that a stand-up joke? Oh no, it's is fucking. Mar- it's, it's Mark Wahlberg from Other Guys. Oh, that's right. I gotta fly, Captain. Um, <laughs> I'm a peacock. Uh, strictly speaking, peacocks don't really fly. <laughs> um, that's what that is. Uh. <laughs> It's yeah okay okay but yeah so she shows up and she's all like still disheveled from their fight and everything but then the next scene she has the fucking secret agent her secret agent outfit on no well, i mean she had ten- enough time passed yes yeah. i know all right what is uh what is your rating that too wow really yeah like for the like for the like for what it is you know like we kind of both feel like this was kind of just a cash grab in the midst of all these other remakes that were coming out. Mm-hmm. And it really is just this like generic action thing. If you want a cool, like shoot them up with some good looking people. Yeah, Cause we, well, we agreed on a three for vanilla sky last week, right? Or a uh, 3.5. I think it was a 3.5. Let me do 3.5. We did a grand of 3.5. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I actually, now that I think about it, I, was like, I didn't really like give too much, thought to this one's rating i was sitting at a three just kind of in my mind and then it's like 2.5 kind of felt more better i'll agree with a two though because yeah i don't know like unless you could think of something like what pushed this to a 2.5 what gave it that 0.5 the acting is open your mind the 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 acting is mediocre even like jessica hill was apparently nominated for a razzie Razzie, yes i was like um, which I kind of was like, out of the three of them, I would say Kate Beckinsale. I don't know, because it was just really hammy with her. I'm the yeah. bad guy. But even then, she, she was, was like, like... She was always like looking down like this. Yeah, I'm evil. Hi, baby. Pew, pew, pew. And I'm hot, too. And I'm hot. And <laughs> smoky eye. Um, <laughs> no, but even then, it's like, well, then you had like Brian Cranston and Bill Nye, which you kind of just felt like a waste of Bill Nye felt like a waste. And also the, the conversation that he has with Matthias, that another one that just feels like such a weird fabricated, like, like, like empty conversation. Like he, like he's a stock character in a spy novel. That's just trying to give him like in for, yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, cause even then too, it's like, even this, the dialogue is like, like you have Brian Cranston who's a great actor, but you didn't really give him anything to do in this. So, I mean, that's the thing is like, it's like, I yeah I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go with the two because like the big thing is like if I mean if you really wanted it to be like this was an actual like not the recall memory thing then you needed to really step up your writing game fucking uh, Kurt Wimmer who wrote Ultraviolet um because <laughs> if you're looking at it in a sense of like this is all a like a memory implant of a spy novel the dialogue then all. I'm like, yeah, no, it's very, it very uh, 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 spoon feeding kind of dialogue, you know, for it to be just a part of a memory, a, a thing that your exper- like this character experiences for, you know, a, a vacation, a, a you know, uh, yeah, an ex- a, a, a movie experience type thing, you know, yeah, your first 
And it's like it's the it's it's what VR becomes, man. <laughs> well, I wanted to like just real quick two things on Brian Cranston. What is that bad guy's name from Resident Evil? Wesker. Wesker. I don't know why, but he was giving me real Wesker vibes. Like before, I don't know with the blonde hair and I don't know. There's something about him that's giving me like I can see him playing Wesker in one of those fucking Resident Evil movies that came out. Okay, I get to see it. Secondly, I was. When I was watching it, I was like, with Brian Cranston and seeing him and other stuff, and then just seeing him in interviews and just kind of what his what I what it, his personality seems to be, he they should have written him more like a Timothy Oliphant villain from Live Free Die Hard. He was just so generic bad guy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Kind with his, he should have been a little bit funny. Like when Jessica Biel uh, says uh, not uh, when uh well, but he's when, also like the well, the chancellor, right? Like he's the fucking like president type, thing. like he or no, not the what? What is it? What is whatever? Yeah, he's the pre- yeah. yeah, he's the pre- just just the president. He's the high chancellor, what, yeah. like whatever the fuck you want to call him. But he, I don't know. Like there's this moment where she goes, you, uh, 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 the prisoner, the robot, like uh, the prisoner has been rescued with an uh, unidentified male, and then she goes, it's him. You're kind of like. Yeah, no shit, it's him. Yeah, right. And I wanted I him. I wanted him to say something along those, not like blatantly funny, but like a you think, like can you take care of this? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. I wanted yeah. that kind of energy with this because you know he is because it kind of had this. I don't know, but yeah. But I was kind of like it's him. It's Brian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you go take care of it, please? Yeah, like I just I was like, uh, right. yeah, and do your fucking job. And I just thought it was weird because that's always in these kind of movies too. These shoot them up action once sometimes your your saving thing is that your villains yeah your villain and their right hand man the ones that are chasing and get you know those are the ones you like like to yeah they're either comedic That's, they or, try to do that too hard with Lori, and but even then she kind of came out kind of yeah yeah but it's like you have these two brian cranston and bill nye that just they just didn't really do anything mm-hmm. in the movie and you're like oh okay it was really a three three pony show with yeah them then that was kind of it all right we need to wrap it up Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, two. Two. All right, we're going to give Total Recall 2022 a two. Two out of five carrots. 2012, not 2022. 2024,000. Did I ever say what year it was? I don't know. Yeah, we said 2012. No, no the... Oh, 2080 something, like 2082 or 2084. Okay. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, like, subscribe. You'll see all of our promos of what's coming up on all those posts. You'll find the leak tree. You click on that, and it'll show you where you have all of our stuff. Uh, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, so on and so forth. Uh, review, like, all that kind of stuff will help us get our stuff out there. We are a self-produced podcast. We make everything. We do everything. You say it almost at the same time. You know? We are a self-produced podcast! This is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and, and Jacob's Jacob mixtape. Tape. Later, guys. Open your eyes. Open your mouth. <laughs> Open your-